And welcome back. Our guest tonight is Anthony Gucciardi. He is an independent journalist and editor of StoryLeak.com. He's going to be talking to us about constitution-free zones. All right, thanks for joining us, Anthony. Hey, thanks a lot. All right, now tell me about these constitutional free zones, you know, because I heard a little bit about this, but I saw the report you did. It was an excellent report. So give us some more detail on this. It's amazing to me that no one's talking about this. The DHS now says it's above the law, it's above the Constitution, and that 197 million citizens mm -hmm. of the United States now live in a constitution-free zone. What that means is the Fourth Amendment doesn't exist, and that any time anyone living in these areas can be searched by the Department of Homeland Security, you know, the same guys behind the TA, uh, TSA, mm -hmm. can be searched at any time. They can take out your laptop, and they've done it. The ACLU is actually suing them over this. And they can search you within these designated zones because they claim it's the border. It's, the border, and it's, yeah. and it's way past the border. Like, I, I saw a graphic that you had on, and it extends, I believe, all the way up to Houston from Mexico. Yeah, we actually have a graphic provided from the ACLU, who is, again, suing them right now. Mm -hmm. And you can see the 100-mile zone absorbs Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Houston. This is just from the top of my head. Right. And, I mean, it's suffocating. Pretty much the entire state of Florida. The entire, state, the entire of state of Florida, yeah. The entire state of Maine, a good portion of Texas where we're at right now. I mean, Austin barely survives this massive quote-unquote border. Mm -hmm. And this goes back to the 50s and 60s where they actually do have laws about the border because, you know, we actually have to secure the border, which they're not doing, ironically. Right. Yet now they're saying that Florida is the border. And oceans count as a bordering nation now under the DHS law. Wow. And then they say, by the way, so there's people like the ACLU and others, and I have to give them credit because they do a lot of good work in this, in this way, but... So they answered them. By law, I think it was 120 days they had to respond by. They respond years later, and they offer this report. We're going to show you here. This report, the Border Searches of Electronic Devices report. And get this. They said, yeah, we'll independently review what's going on. We'll see if it's constitutional. We'll see if it's protecting America. Mm -hmm. They reviewed themselves. Of course. They, just like uh, the Department of Justice. You know, Obama said, you guys can review yourselves and tell me what you think about it. Exactly. So they, they reviewed themselves, and they said, we're acting 100% within the law, and the Constitution doesn't apply to these people because it's on the border. So now, literally, literally, you do not have a Constitution if you are in this 100-mile border. And, and think about this, though. That's the Fourth Amendment. Mm -hmm. What happens when they want to say you don't have a First Amendment because you're on the border? A Second oh, yeah. Amendment. Oh, they yeah. can declare that at any time. They're just initiating this Fourth Amendment phase, but in years, months, weeks, days, whatever, they could say the First Amendment doesn't apply, the whole Constitution doesn't apply now in these zones, and no one is talking about this besides there is one piece, a Wired article on this that said it. And you guys are hosting yeah, this Yeah, I believe we have that, that article yeah. as well. Exactly. And it's, it's such a horrible thing because we have people on like Pastor Stephen Anderson out of, out of Arizona. And, you know, he goes through and he encounters a lot of checkpoints. And they say, well, this is the immigration checkpoint. He's like, I'm in the United States. Is, am I immigrating somewhere, officer? I thought I was driving down the street to my house in Arizona, not to Mexico. But this is what they do. They stop you. They harass you. And Alex has gone to the border. He did a report. And you can see people free and easy just walking across the border on their horses and so forth. And nobody's stopping them. All law-abiding citizens now are terrorists. Under the regulations of the United States government and the military, we can classify 100% of the entire nation. 100% of everyone watching right now is a terrorist under these laws. I mean, if you pay with cash, mm -hmm. if you are... Wear blue jeans. If you, if you wear blue jeans, if you care about your privacy, you're a terrorist. So, I mean, they're already able to take away your constitutional rights. This is just a really draconian, immediate, blatant way to do it. And it's amazing that right here, right now, this is essentially an exclusive on this. Mm -hmm. No one else is talking about it. The media is not talking about it. And they know what's amazing. It just shows the depth of this because they know that if they talked about this, they would get record ratings, record views, record advertising. Mm -hmm. They would regain credibility. And Gallup polls show that about 20% or less of people actually trust the mainstream media. So they're blowing this off on an agenda. It's not because it's not real. We know it's real. We've seen the DHS reports, the oh, yeah. Wired reports over and over again. So they're blowing it off, and we have to carry it on our shoulders. And it's sad to me that InfoWars right now, Story Leak, are the only ones reporting on this. And we have to carry the weight of all this on our shoulders and do the best we can to present it because the mainstream media, the worthless urine stream media, is not covering it. And speaking of the mainstream media, you have this report on your site as well. Obama was, was recently on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And, you know, uh, Jay Leno says, you know, what do you think about the surveillance state? And he's like, we don't have a surveillance state. 
We don't have domestic States. spying. It doesn't exist. Yeah, and I, I mean, this man blatantly lies to, to the American people. But you know, Obama likes to play these war games. They're not wars. They're not attacks. They're kinetic action. So maybe in his mind, he's like, well, maybe this isn't a spy state. Maybe it's a surveillance issue, or maybe it's a you know, duck and hide issue, peek in your windows issue, whatever word game he chooses to play. And you had something on your side about that as well. Yeah, well, check that out. The surveillance state, that's important, everything like that. But he goes on and he bashes Russia. And says that they're still in a Cold War state and that they're, you know, Putin is, uh, he's the next Hitler. Jay Leno said, you know, I see that he's gathering up the gays and, and he's going to be the next Hitler. I, that's what I've seen with Hitler and Stalin. And they're comparing him to Hitler and everything like that. Meanwhile, Obama is funding, as mm -hmm. Alex has talked about, no one else talks about this. I've written a report on this where they, the Washington Times says that the, the Syrian rebels go around killing Christians and beheading them to screaming barbaric fans who are in a bloodlust. So he is funding these Syrian rebels, going around killing innocents, killing Christians, unless they convert to their mission 100% and pay a massive tax that sends them into bankruptcy over there. Mm -hmm. And then he's saying that Russia are the bad guys for going after the gay community. Oh, yeah. And, and, and also think about the Austin thing, the whole entire issue with the Austin police report on Infowars.com, where it says there's going to be a potential terrorist attack and everything like that. But then they redacted the report saying, no, that wasn't meant for a public consumption. Sure. It's all lies, though, because they also shut down the embassies. Mm -hmm. But they don't tell you about how Obama is funding al-Qaeda through these Syrian rebels, and then al-Qaeda is issuing the threats, and then they act like al-Qaeda are the bad guys. So depending on the mainstream media scope, al-Qaeda are either their, your, our worst enemy or our best friend. So it depends on the propaganda stream of that day. It depends where they want to funnel the anger, the rage, the you know, overall bloodlust of the American people. So we're funding al-Qaeda, and then they're also going around killing all the Christians and everything like that. No one wants to talk about it. It's too hot of an issue. And again, the mainstream media could have record ratings, record advertising, record views if they talked about it. But they don't want to. And then we're funding them, and then we're afraid of them afterwards. Yeah, and that's what I said. We went out to uh, the American Idol tryouts, and I was talking to this lady, and I was explaining it to her. And I guess maybe this is the first time she actually you know, took the time to think about it. And I said, yeah, we're funding the Syrian rebels who are really al-Qaeda. And, and you know, al-Qaeda, that's the reason why they have to pat us down at the airports. That's the reason why they say they have to tap your phone and so forth. And, and she says, well, that doesn't make any sense. Doesn't, don't people have problems with this? So I'm like, well, I have a problem with this, but most of America seems not to care. I get hundreds of emails when I release reports like this, and they say, this isn't happening. How is this possibly happening? I send them the CNN article where it doesn't talk about how they're killing the Christians or anything. It just says, do we need to fund them more? You know, it says Obama's pushing to fund the Syrian rebels with anti-tank weaponry, other missiles. and All the things like they don't want us to have. Obama says we can't have an AK-47. Yeah. Meanwhile, he's sending rounds, guns, everything to the, to the, uh, to the Syrian anti -tank rebels. Anti-tank missiles mm -hmm. that they can use on our tanks. Yeah. That al-Qaeda is getting and then going and fueling the war in Afghanistan by blowing us up. Yeah. And then also the, the issue, though, isn't should we fund them? because no one even knows who the Syrian rebels are. I bet if we did a poll, like 1% of the nation would even know what we're talking yeah. about. But they don't talk about should we fund them, it's are we funding them enough? Yeah, how, how much why. is too much? Do they not have enough ammunition to use on Christians and burn down villages and so forth? Evil Assad, though. You know, in, in order to get to Assad, they pretend that they have to go to these Christian villages, and there's videos online. Mm -hmm. They will slice off the little child's head, and they use 14-year-old child soldiers, too. Yeah, we've shown that video of the kid playing with the dynamite. He was running down the street with an AK. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But th they, nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about that because that's the real issue. And then he's busy blasting Putin over Snowden and all that. It's all distraction. Even, even though the media, by the way, they were like, wow, Jay Leno was really hard-hitting with his questions. That's, that just shows that... That's so what, if that's what it takes yeah. for a late-night comedian to get on and ask a real question in this country, th that's... We're pretty far gone. I read an article. It was said that uh, Jay Leno's questions were the hardest ever uh, hit by Obama. Good. I, I mean, but that's nothing. But yeah, that's his nothing. His questions are worthless, and his answers were, were so amazing that Jay Leno could have easily called him out on any of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's no domestic spying. Snowden's a traitor. You know, Putin's horrible for giving him asylum. It's just, it's all a big joke to me. Meanwhile, he gives, well, maybe we don't use the term asylum, but we have all these people in the Justice Department in his own cabinet committing these uh, horrible crimes, the Benghazi, Fast and Furious, and he's really not holding anybody accountable. He says, yeah, Fast and Furious, go investigate yourself. Uh, wiretapping, go investigate yourself. You could say this. You could say that Russia is having asylum for whistleblowers like Snowden. And the United States is having asylum for CEOs of Monsanto, uh, top Goldman Sachs executives, top banksters that are robbing the country and funding Mexican drug cartels, as admitted by NBC in 2011. So, I mean, we are, we are hosting the criminals of the world. And it's up to the international community now to harbor and help 
and give asylum to the actual whistleblowers exactly exposing right. what's going on. We're giving asylum to the mafia political cartel. Russia's giving asylum to those exposing the mafia political cartel. Yeah, and that's just how far our country has gone. Now, Anthony, we've come pretty much to the end of our time. Now, I just want to talk briefly. You had an entry in the Operation Paul Revere contest called Disarmed. A great film. Unfortunately, didn't win. But just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we actually went and we talked to top representatives. We talked to Mike Adams and a bunch of others on gun, tr gun control stats. Not debate, not opinion, gun control stats, hard stats that show 900 plus thousand per year are saved through law-abiding citizens owning firearms. Mm -hmm. That shows that the most of the gun deaths are from gangs and in gun-free zones. That show that Chicago now has more gun murders than those who are dying overseas in Afghanistan. Don't so want to talk about that. All this kind of stuff is a 30-minute red pill, if you will, a 30-minute compression of hard-hitting information, an informational bomb, an informational nuke on the whole gun control debate. It's all, it's all facade. And for those who say that gun deaths are an epidemic, we went around and I asked people, how many people do you think die per year from gun deaths? 100,000, they said, a million, 10 million. You know, rifles only account for about 400 or so, or even 300, I believe. Mm -hmm. so and that's hunting accidents and all that stuff. So we're, and some of it's defense against criminals trying to break in. We're saving hundreds of thousands, around 900-something thousand lives per year with the Second Amendment in full force versus the, you know, couple thousand that die from gang-related, gun-free zone area deaths. And yeah, and that's a very good point, and really enjoy the piece. Now, Anthony, unfortunately, that's the end of our time, but Anthony Gucciardi, StoryLeak.com. And that's going to do it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. But before you go, stop by the InfoWars store and pick up this American Drug War II. Now, this is a sequel to a great film. I definitely recommend it for anybody who's interested in such topics. It's on sale at the InfoWars store. Now, this film is in limited supply here at the InfoWars, so be sure to pick up your copy today because once they're gone, they're gone. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News, and we'll see you back next week. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show.